The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Mark The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel reading for this Sunday comes from the sixth chapter of St. Mark. We have been reflecting on shepherding. In the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, we see the anger of God directed towards shepherds who mislead the flock, who are the cause of the scattering of the flock simply because they do not care for the flock. And God promises to punish them for their evil deeds and also promises to raise a king shepherd who will be fair, who will be just, and who will care for the flock. And this is fulfilled in Jesus. In the second reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, we see how Jesus the shepherd brings to unity the chosen people Israel and the so-called Gentiles or pagans. There will be one flock and he will lead them to the Father, access to the Father. And the Holy Spirit will be equally poured unto them. But the shepherd, Jesus, will do this by the offering of his blood, by the offering of his life. The shepherd cares for the flock. A shepherd like Jesus cares for the flock by offering his life. And in him, those who used to be far off from each other will become one body, in his body, in his blood. So caring, self-giving, making others the priority. These are the secrets of Jesus for being the true shepherd that brings the divided people of the world into one flock. This is narrated to us in the Gospel for today. We see again the spirit of shepherding love in Jesus. Last week, we saw how Jesus sent his disciples on mission. And he told them to preach the good news, to accompany the good news with acts of love and charity, especially towards the sick and those who are possessed, and uh, just to be detached from anything else. You have the message of the kingdom. That is enough. Now, in this passage for today, the disciples return to Jesus to report to Jesus what they had done, what had happened in their mission, what they had accomplished. So Jesus, you know, as the, uh, the one who sent them, I think, listened to them. Now, Jesus, the good shepherd, sees how tired his disciples were. You see the sensitivity of Jesus the shepherd. After listening to the wonderful reports of the disciples, he invites them to go to a deserted place so that they can rest and they can eat. Look at the sensitivity of Jesus. Jesus was not just after work accomplished. Hmm? I repeat that. Jesus as shepherd was not only after the accomplishments of work assigned to people. He was not only after success or what we now call a good return in investment. 
Jesus was also sensitive to the needs of his co-workers. And as a good shepherd, he looked after their welfare. So he said, we better escape from this noisy place. Go to a faraway place so that you could rest and eat. My dear brothers and sisters, resting and eating are part of mission. They are not really a break from mission. They are a way of nourishing ourselves again so that we could pray, we could reflect, we could recover enough spiritual and physical energies so that we could move on to the next stage of mission. And uh, let us please imitate Jesus the Good Shepherd. I am appealing to those in positions of responsibility, those who have people working under them, those who have authority, who can order other people to do this, to do that. As shepherds, are we sensitive to their needs? Do we recognize their needs also to rest? Do we think of their need for food? Do we invite them to, uh, in a way, distance themselves for a while from work so that they could be more equipped for mission? You know, our present Pope, Pope Benedict XVI, has a wonderful reflection on rest, the Sabbath rest. It is not only to recuperate you know, uh, enough energies, but it is also to teach us that we should not worship work. Work is not our God. We were created, and part of our being the image of God is to be productive and creative. But work is not meant to be our God. Some people make their work their God. But it's not really work. It is really income. <laughs> Some people live for the income and they slave themselves to death. And the little income that they get is not even enough for their medical bills. So take care of yourself. You are more important than this work or income that you are making as God. So Jesus is reminding us, come and rest. Resting is part of our recognition of the true God. No? And Jesus the shepherd, leads his co-workers to the proper attitude and outlook towards mission. Hey, okay? so please, employers and those uh, in positions of responsibility, be shepherds to your flock and your employees. Take care of them. But when Jesus and his disciples reached the deserted place, oh, what did they discover? It was not deserted at all. The people heard about them escaping to this place, and probably they knew the place much better. They got to the place before Jesus and the disciples. And Jesus, looking at the crowds, had compassion for them. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And what did he do? He forgot about his need for rest and the need of the other disciples for rest. He taught the crowds at great length. Now, this is a wonderful addition to what we have said earlier. Jesus the shepherd makes sure that his co-workers find rest, but he is also sensitive to the crowds, the lost, the confused, those who are hungry for God's Word. And when they come to the shepherd, the shepherd makes them the priority and not his own rest. So the shepherd is also able to transcend his own needs for the good of the flock. Now this is also hard teaching. Jesus could have insisted Hey, we are here to rest, not to teach you. But again, the shepherd's heart dominated. 
he saw that they were like sheep in need of the best food, which is the Word of God. So he gave them what they needed, the Word of God. So my dear brothers and sisters, as I have, I have been insisting uh, at the beginning of this reflection, we are all shepherds. So let us imitate Christ. Let us be sensitive to the people given to us to love and care for, and whenever needed, let's, let us transcend our personal needs in order to be able to respond to their greater need. Next month, we will be celebrating the feast of Saint Jean Marie Vianney, the patron of priests. Saint Jean Marie Vianney was really a good shepherd after the image of Jesus. He was a frail person. His health was not that good. And in many occasions, the people who collaborated with him, with him would tell him, go to your room, rest, eat. You need energy. And when the opportunities came, he followed them. But crowds came to go to confession. Crowds came to hear the Word of God through catechesis. Crowds came to adore the Blessed Sacrament. And he, the Good Shepherd, even with a frail, faint voice, would teach them. And with the little energy that he had, would bless them in benediction. A pragmatic world will say, Oh, come on, Jean-Marie Vianney, be practical. But for a shepherd, like Jesus, it is not so much practicality. It is caring. It is loving. It is offering my life, offering my blood for the sheep. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.